What's up everyone, I'm Michael and welcome back. Today we're gonna be taking a look at a simple green screen effect that you can do from home. It's a simple green screen composite and we'll be working with a few different elements and getting them all to blend together uh, to make a more uniform final image. This is a Doctor Strange inspired effect and when we shot this we didn't know exactly what direction we were going to go with it. All we knew is that we wanted to have the artist swipe between scenes. Later we chose to do this look. I'll be using Adobe After Effects so let's fire it up and jump in the screen. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is rename these clips. This was a layer stack from a Premiere Pro timeline that I sent into After Effects. The green screen footage should be the top layer, but the elements we'll be swiping to placed underneath. Once everything is named, I'm going to navigate to the Effects and Presets tab and search for Key Light. Instead of grabbing the single effect, we're going to grab the bundled effect that includes Key Light, Key Cleaner, and Advanced Spill Suppressor. Select the screen color eyedropper and make a selection on your green screen. Looks like my screen recorder isn't picking up the drop down menu, so that's my bad. Uh, but under view, where intermediate result is selected by default, we want to change that view mode to screen matte. Under the screen matte twirl down, play with the clip black and clip white sliders to better clean up your key. The black matte represents what's being keyed out, while the white matte shows what will be included. Once you're happy with the key, we'll switch back from the screen map view to intermediate result. It's a much improved key, but there's still a bit more that needs to be done. Go ahead and draw a garbage mat around the subject, being sure to include all possible movements in the mat. If your subject is doing a lot of moving, I recommend animating the mask to remove as much of the green screen as possible. Then we'll enable the advanced spill suppressor. That really cleaned up our key a lot. I downloaded a few background images and the portal from a stock website. I recommend Storyblocks or Envato Elements. I use both depending on what I need. Drag and drop your background image or background footage to the bottom layer stack and rename the clip. Next, place the portal effect between your subject and the rest of the layers. Press S on your keyboard to rescale the image and P to reposition it. Adjust until you're happy with the placement. Next, unhide the location layer. Press S on the keyboard to rescale the image, aiming to frame the shot in the portal without letting the edges of the image appear in the portal. Scrub ahead to where the subject begins the swiping motion and hitting P to bring up position, drop a keyframe. Move ahead in time until the subject finishes the motion and change the position of the image so that it has properly swiped out of the portal. Then unhide the second location layer, adjust its scale and move it to the right of the first layer, then place a keyframe. Scrub ahead until you're at the last keyframe of the first image and move the layer to the center of the portal. Continue this process for however many swipes your subject does. As the subject swipes, we should start to see the basic form of the effect taking shape. Selecting our first location layer, press G to bring up the pin tool. Draw a mask around the portal circumference. Press M on your keyboard to bring up masks. Twirl down the mask menu and place a keyframe on the mask path. Move ahead and adjust the mask's path over time to prevent edges of the location layer from breaking the illusion. Select the mask in Command or Control C to copy. Paste it on the second layer and remove the keyframes. Double click the mask and select the whole thing and reposition it over the portal. Place a keyframe and repeat the previous steps. The effect is taking shape a bit more now, as we can see each location is swiping with our subject's hand and staying inside the portal's circumference. Select the location layers and press M on your keyboard to hide the mask twirl down. To better hide the hard edges between layers, enable motion blur on the location layers. I want the portal to have a bit more of a surface, so I'm going to add some golden light leaks that I downloaded from a stock site. Place the light leaks between the portal and location layers. S to rescale, and if you click this chain icon, you'll break the uniform scaling and we'll be able to adjust the size one dimension at a time. Press G and draw a mask around the portal. Rename your layer. Press F to bring up the mask feather option and add a feather value of 15 to soften the edges of the mask. Then, when the mode says normal, change the blending mode to screen. Press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate the layer. Press T to bring up opacity and change the value to 50%. Navigate to the Effects and Presets tab and search for Lumetri Color. Place the effect on your first location layer. I want to blend the layer with the portal a bit more, so I'm going to change the temperature and the hue of the layer. I'll also boost the exposure value a little. Select the effect and press Command or Control C to copy the effect. Paste the effect on the other location layers and make adjustments as needed. This concert shot was shot with dramatically different lighting conditions and on a different camera, so I'm going to search for tint in the effects and presets tab. With the white eyedropper, I'll sample the edge of the portal to remap the white values. 
Next, search for camera lens blur and place the effect on your subject layer. Change the blur value to 15. This will help draw the viewer's attention to the portal. Copy and paste the effect on your background layer to better adjust where the eye will focus. Select the background layer and Command or Control D to duplicate. Rename this layer Background Glow. With the new layer selected, press G to grab the pen tool and draw a circular mask along the portal. Press F to adjust the feather value. Add a ton of feathering to blend the glow layer with the background layer. If you hide visibility on the background layer, you can see just how feathered the working layer is. Drag and drop the Lumetri color effect on the background glow layer. Press the stopwatch on the exposure slider and change the exposure over intervals of two frames to add flicker. Something to better sell the light cast from the portal. After you've added a few values, select the layer and press U to bring up active keyframes. Select the keyframes, Commander controls you to copy, and paste them at the end of your keyframe line. Repeat until your entire layer has keyframes every couple frames. Next, I'm going to add a dust element, again, downloaded from a stock site. Uh, we'll place it between the subject and the portal and adjust scale. Then, change the blending mode from normal to screen. Select and unhide all of your layers. Navigate to the layer menu at the top and create a new solid. Using the eyedropper tool, select the color of light on the right side of your subject and rename the layer. With the solid layer selected, press G and draw a mask around the right side of the frame. Increase the mask feather until the solid is barely noticeable. You can off and on the layer to see what it's doing and how it's affecting the image. Navigate back to the layer menu and create a new solid. Using the eyedropper, sample a region of light on the left side of your subject. Rename the layer. Draw a mask and increase the feather. This will subtly help blend our composite with our subject. Additional blending can be achieved with the curves, tent, or Lumetri color effects. You could also add a little camera shake to better sell the illusion. When you're happy with it, let's add it to the render queue and render it out. Hopefully this video was helpful for those of you looking to blend simple green screen effects with real footage. I have some fun non-tutorial videos planned for the future, so I, I hope you'll stick around. The uh, best way to do that would be to subscribe and then you'll be in the loop. Uh, as always, if you have any requests or if you want to leave any tips to like further elaborate on any of the things I talked about today, do that in the comments below. Um, and as always, thanks for watching. Peace.